Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the stream. We are going to be taking a look at some spellcrafting today. So we're going to go take a look. Uh, I've just I've just loaded in. Um, I'm just going to make sure the stream and everything is looking okay. We've got good sound. Uh, looks like we're doing all right. Uh, so I did choose the preset. Uh, load you in right here by the portal to the Scalarium. So we're just going to go take a look at, uh, at what we got for spellcrafting. Um, I, like I said, I, I literally just like logged in, uh, played around a little bit with just clicking around. So it looks like uh, by a lot of these skills, you can kind of go through and, and see the various skills that there is right beside them. Uh, it tells you that right now it's set to default, but it'll tell you that you can change it to soothing blue in this case. Uh, so these are kind of the custom colors that you can do for, for your various skills. Um, yeah, and then it depends what it is. Uh, there's, there you go, tor turquoise blue. Um, we've got, uh, I think, yellow for entropy here, if you want, vibrant yellow. Uh, so this is some of the skills. We'll actually just like walk through them all, actually, just so you can kind of see uh, what you can what you can change and everything. Um, and if there's anything in particular you guys want to see, just, just give me a shout out. Uh, Looks like the stream was struggling for a second there. Let me know if there's any more issues, guys. All right, yeah, so uh, looks like carve. We can change up here if we want. Uh, Cinepar red. Uh, reverse slash. We can change that to, okay, ruby red. All right, so if you want a red theme, uh, might work well with the bleed build we just did. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. The bleed build's not out yet. <laughs> Ble the bleed build that is about to be out <laughs> uh, for a warden, a bleed warden. Uh, okay, cool. Whirlwind. Can change that to, to orange. Interesting. Uh, oh, wait. Sword and board, flow slash. Okay. Probably not going to use that very much. Snipe. Scarlet red. Okay. All of these going to be red. Crimson red. Yeah, they're all just different, different flavors of red. I wonder if there's going to be more colors that unlock or more of these for the various skills or not. I have a feeling probably, I don't know. It would be weird for PvP if they did it with all of them. Uh, okay, Oynix Black for uh, four Shock. That's interesting. That's cool. Uh, wall. Violet Purple. Okay. Weakness Elements. Also purple. I mean, the, the icon looks cool. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, that's really cool. All right, restoration staff. Okay, cool. They got all the all the main ones. <laughs> they know what skills we use uh, for the most part, so that's cool. Okay, purple. And regeneration. Okay, azure blue. wonder if we're going to have like a purple or blue color. Yeah, sky blue. Okay, cool. Uh, light armor. So the armor is not really changing that much. That's to be expected. I, I don't expect anything crazy in here. Soul magic. Okay. Uh, and that's unlocked by default. Okay, so once you unlock, um, so once you, uh, you unlock this, the the uh, uh, the quest, then you can you can change the uh, soul trap. That's interesting. All right. Um, cool. Well. Uh, I guess we should just finish looking through the rest of these. I know it's a little bit slow going, but uh, more red. More red <laughs> with, with mo most of these skills. Uh, okay, Dawn Light Orange for Barb Trap, sure. And then Purple, okay. Uh, what's our Meteor options? That could be interesting. Blazing Orange, okay. Man, we're going to have to have seizure warnings on this with all these different colors. This could be... Uh, this could turn pretty funny, pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, and then, yeah, I think we saw Soothing Blue and Amber Orange for the Warhorn. And then Barrier? What was Barrier? Okay, Turquoise Blue, sure. All right, uh, everything else should, generally speaking, be the same. Um, uh, I actually don't know where to go. Were you in the right place already? Huh, oh, okay, cool. We gotta get through the door. Um, so you can port directly here, I guess is the idea. That's interesting. 
<laughs> I think we found where everybody's at. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder what seal that is. Is that a bow? That looks like a torch. Looks like they're swinging a torch. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Look at this pile of bodies. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Wow. Just stacking them. Stacking them up, huh? Oh man, okay, let's take a look. Scribing altar, scribing grimoires. Select your grimoire to begin. Each grimoire represents a unique skill associated with an existing skill line. All right, so it's gonna guide us through the process. Actually, I might, should probably get rid of the uh, lazy set crafter here and get rid of that. We don't need it. Okay, cool. So this is, this is what it should look like. Sorry for those of you, uh, <laughs> that other stuff was just add-ons from PC. Uh, cool. Scribing and then... Found skills to revert to. Okay, can we save them, I guess? Uh, do I not know? Do we have to open up? We might have to open up our inventory and to learn all these. I haven't actually messed with it. Let me see here. There we go. All grimoires, all scripts. Uh, you were of everything else. Stas of surprising seal styles. Okay, cool. Well, let's take a look. Oh man. All right. Just pull them all out. Do we need to learn them? Yeah. Okay. We'll just eat them. Uh, scripts. Craftability skills is not unlocked. Okay. I think that's gonna let us change some of these colors now I think right that's what that was yeah okay cool so I guess let's get through and actually uh well you guys tell me if you want to see something else but I'm thinking we should go through and just see what all the different colors we can add real quick we might step out of this area because it's getting a little crazy <laughs> all right uh, we'll hang out over here for a second um and let's just go through every single one of them and and see what they do we'll start here at the top just to make sure we don't skip any uh, and I'll just change it to the new, to the new thing. All right. Oh, okay. Can you just change this back and forth too? Or no? Okay. Looks like you basically can. Cool. Um, we need a two-hander. <laughs> Tithis, get out of here. What are you doing? Um, let me see. Quick slots. There we are. Um. Gosh, it's been so long since I've had to do this. Uh, <laughs> to this, there you go. I haven't had to make a character in a little bit. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's just get a two-handed sword. We'll probably just need all this stuff. So we'll just grab a little bit of everything. Bow. We, we already have a staff. We got daggers now. We need a two-hander. There we go. Uh, sword and board we're missing, I suppose. Uh, Kamos. Where are the shields at? Oh, there we go. Just do that. Cool. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, okay, so I guess we have, yeah, we'll just go ahead and quit. All right, so this is carve. Um, okay, that's pretty subtle. Let's see if it changes at all. If we do morph it. Doesn't really look like it. Okay, that's. I'm colorblind, so this this might not be the best colors for me too. So, uh, and then I'm not going to be able to execute anybody because I need I need a target. <laughs> oh yeah, they said there's dummies around here, if I recall. So we'll see if we can find one. Uh, can we attack this person? We cannot. <laughs> um, I suppose we could check the map. I don't know where they, they said there was dummies somewhere. I don't recall where they said they they were at. We might bail on skills that we have to hit something with. Just because I don't want to spend, I don't want to waste time right now trying to do that. Can I hit you? I cannot. Anybody? Anybody targetable? Nobody's targetable. Okay. Uh. Well, I, I suppose we'll come back to, to some of them then. Uh, let's go with, so low slash can be the same deal. We can actually do Whirl of Blades though. 
Let's see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, that's... Nope. <laughs> uh... All right. First crash. <laughs> uh, well, that lasted a long time. <laughs> uh, beautiful new loading screen. Oh, wait, we've already had this for a little bit now. <laughs> uh, okay. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll hang out for a second, see if they come back up. Hmm. This is the uh, this is the thing where we're having trials when we get DC'd and everybody's like, well, what should I do? And we try to do all kinds of crazy things. I guess while we're waiting, you know what we could do? Is we could probably pull up some... Probably pull up something here. Probably got some, some patch notes. Yeah, let's take a look at some patch notes. All right. <laughs> and I'll just keep checking periodically. Uh, so... <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Uh, so, yeah, welcome to the latest chapter, Golden Road. Investigate the return of Athelia, a Daedric prince never seen before in Elder Scrolls series. Uncover the schemes of her most devoted followers to protect Tamriel from the chaos of unbridled change. So uh, I should have shown you the map here, but we have the the, the new uh, area, West Westweld, um, home of the wealthy Golovian Imperials in the city of Skingrod. Uh, in Ketera region, in Ketera, a bountiful region first seen in the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Um, you know, uh, we'll just kind of skip through because I don't, I don't know if I need to read through all of this stuff. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get tired of reading through it. <laughs> uh, let's skip to something fun here. Okay, so um, I'm trying to remember which one of these is bullet pointed, but we'll just, we'll just skip down. All right, so the new zone. Uh, I think most of this stuff is pretty basic. We know, here we go, here's the features. Uh, so nine full length objectives, some tied directly to the zone story, uh, incompletable in any order. Six delves, uh, each with their own sky shards and delve boss, that's pretty normal. Uh, two public dungeons, Salorn, an ancient Aelid ruin, and Left Wheel, a uh, coastal trading post under attack by Miramor forces. And then the new world events, you know, like there's like dolmens and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be mere more incursions. Six world bosses. Uh, we have the new trial, which we'll be actually streaming on later tonight. Uh, that'll be 930 Eastern, uh, 730 Mountain. And um, three new crafted uh, crafting set locations, uh, quests, and all that good stuff. So um, this, was, this was interesting, a special caper quest available to those who have completed both Necrom and Westworld storylines. This quest is all of it, also available in the PTS for testing purposes. Um, yeah, so these will be happening at, in random places in the world. Obviously, <laughs> uh, scri scribing we're trying to take a look at. So the grimoire, I guess, is that the base skill behavior is what you choose. That's the first thing that we kind of unlock there. And then uh, you have the focus script. They can, uh, I don't know, these are very ambiguous when I was reading them, so that's why I wanted to just get on PTS and see it, but uh, it adds to the main function of the skill. Also helps determine its name, resource type, and resource cost. And then, uh, and then yeah, we have signature scripts, and then finally uh, you can affix the script, which uh, they had a final benefit to the skill, usually the major, minor buff, and debuff system. So, um, you know, this is... <laughs> Uh, and you have to use luminous inks. This is a new a new thing that we're gonna have to to use to actually make these. Um, this is kind of interesting. Oh, hey, Liriel. Hey, Koalas. I'm sorry. Uh, my chat so far over there. I didn't see you guys. Um, yeah. So uh, th this is like a new a new uh, thing. It drops like has a low chance of dropping just overland. I think we'll have to kind of like figure it out. You do have to complete the quest before it'll start dropping for you. Uh, everything with describing also is uh, is account wide. Oh, hey, Shadow. Been loving the content. Decided to subscribe. Hey, <laughs> glad you did. Uh, just made a warden based on the the healer build. You've been loving it. That's awesome. Oh, cool. You just did your first trial. Uh, oh, wait, DSR was your first trial. <laughs> uh, with it, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you've probably healed before then, or that might have went rough. <laughs> uh, that's a hard one to to, to do. Um, yeah. So 
uh, luminous inks. That's what one of the things we're going to have to be gathering. You do have to complete the quests. Uh, there's several quests that each unlock uh, more features. So there'll be, I think, I think four of them is what it was. Um, yeah, and then uh, you'll be able to place these these new skills on the skill line. I'm still, you know, I read all this earlier, but I was still like unclear a little bit how it's working. Uh, yeah, Koalas, yeah, we have a Discord. Uh, you can actually find it here, and for anybody on stream, uh, I run a trial guild in PCNA, but we also, like, anybody can come and ask questions. We have help channels and everything else. Um, I forgot to put up a PTS discussion channel. I usually have one, so we'll need to put one up, but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, anybody's welcome if you have questions about anything. It doesn't matter if you're on console, what have you. Uh, we have help channels. I'm happy to, and, and, you know, some of us play some other games, too, and stuff like that in there, so, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so you'll have like, I think four quests that you'll have to unlock. Uh, each one of them uh, allows you, you know, get you deeper into the scribing system. There'll also be, uh, you know, what we quickly just unlocked there was changing how the skills look. So it appears that there's at least one change you can make to each skill, which is kind of interesting uh, to the color and choices and stuff like that. I assume that they're not going to allow us to do just any color because that could be very confusing in particular in PvP. And so you, you want to have some predictability about like w knowing what skill an opponent is casting. And I think it could make it a little bit harder, but I don't actually know if, if what they're going to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shadow saying that it was a group finder trial. Uh, so there's rough at points waiting for a full 12 version group took longer than the trial itself. Oh, wow. Okay. So you ran it through, ran through on normal, I guess. So you probably just, just burned through. Awesome. Cool. Glad you joined Koalas. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, yeah. And, and there'll be a website up soon. I'm, I was working on it earlier today with, uh, with Daedric actually. Um, Daedric's doing most of the work. <laughs> uh, cool. So, um, yeah, so this is just kind of explaining a bit of how to, how to do it and stuff like that. Um, yeah. In the training room in the West wing, uh, you can go there and test on the dummies. So I guess we'll, we'll look to the West. Maybe we went East or South or something. Um, yeah, we're getting some achievement furnishings after completing the quest line, uh, when using alternate characters, you just have to do the first era of scribe. Okay. So you just have to do the first, um, quest and then it unlocks it on, on that character or what have you. So that's good. And then, yeah, they have it down here. So, uh, your skills have to be at rank 25 and I believe you have to be at level 30 to be able to use them when you're leveling up. Or it, it was a little bit unclear with the language where it said you had to, if you had CP, uh, that that was fine. So, um, I don't know if that means if you've gotten a CP and you're leveling an ult, you can do it immediately or not. I'm not actually sure. Um, let's do this. Let's let's take a look and see if uh, if we got lucky here, if it came back up. No. Uh, we'll fully back out here and just see if it'll, if we can, uh, see if it'll let us like load back in. It's weird because, I mean, maybe it just crashed. There are, um, <laughs> we saw there's, there's quite a few people uh, trying to trying to get in. Uh, I was it on my other screen. Hold on, let me. Whew. Computer did not like that. Yeah, it's not doing it. Okay. Well, bummer. Just one second while I pull up some stuff. We'll go ahead and give a cover to the patch notes here. Uh, well, I guess we're going to be hanging out, guys, <laughs> hoping that the servers come back up. Uh, <laughs> uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, at least rank 25 in the skill. Um, and then these are the names of the uh, or the base names, I guess. I don't think this determines the final name. Um, so. Vault, which we saw with a bow, that's like the backflip thing we saw in the preview, uh, which is like a to get some distance between your opponent and you. So that should be interesting. Unfortunately, mostly for you know solo kind of content for the most part. Uh, even in dungeon, I mean, you can do it in dungeons. People do it all the time, but <laughs> uh, even in dungeons, like you you know you kind of want to stand in one place in a group. And so if you're like backflipping out of it, uh, that's not going to be. <laughs> it's not going to be amazing for for your group healer. They're going to be like, "Stop running away from my heals. <laughs> let let me heal you." <laughs> uh, so yeah, shield throw uh, sounds interesting. Uh, smash with a two handed elemental explosion with the destruction staff, and then uh, Mender's bond with the restoration staff, which I'm kind of kind of curious about. I uh, it sounds like 
it it sounds like <laughs> uh, that we are going to be able to add a lot of like buffs uh, to either either for ourselves or for our group. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but again, like looking through this, I couldn't really tell a whole lot. I thought traveling knife was a little bit weird in the in the dual wield skill line because this is. Um, you know, we already have a knife throwing skill <laughs> in the dual wield skill line. So it kind of seems like a little bit redundant. Um, so I don't know, but it is what it is. Uh, let me see if I can. Hey, zombie, what's going on? There's a part in the path patch notes where I'm, I'm not sure if you have to level which glasses to unlock all describing. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, exactly. I was also uh, confused by that. Hey, zombie, what's going on, man? Uh, any good necro changes? Yeah, good necro changes. Um, they the are tether. Uh, now they've changed it. So they were treating it like it was a sticky dot, which it is not. <laughs> uh, sticky dots are ones you can cast on an opponent. doesn't matter where they go. And, and some of those can be AOE, like you cast it on several opponents, and then it doesn't matter where they go, it'll keep applying to them. Uh, so that's what, that's, it was scaled to have that kind of damage because that's easier to use. It stays on our opponent. And instead now it's going to be treated like a ground dot. So it will do more damage uh, base. At least that's how they described it here. So uh, a little bit extra damage, who knows how much. Um, I don't think it's going to be game changing, but it's not nothing. So, you know, something there. At least it's a good sign people are hyped for the new content. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> so many people, it crashed the servers. I guess we'll, we'll find out if it ends up being that. <laughs> uh, uh, for some reason, my chat is doing something a little weird. It's in an awkward position. That's why I'm having to look so far to my right right now. Um, <laughs> I'm afraid to touch anything when I'm on stream, though, if the stream is generally working. Uh, okay. <laughs> so you guys will just have to forgive me as I crane my neck to the side as I'm trying to uh, keep up with chat and everything. Uh, yeah, we'll keep going down here. Um, soul Magic Seal Line, uh, uh, Wield Soul, which I think we saw earlier, Soul Burst. Um, yeah, earned by completing the Scribing Quest Line. So that's just by unlocking it. That's the one that we already had. Uh, or, and maybe also with, with Wield Soul, it seemed like both. Um, yeah, Mage's Guild, Fighter's Guild, and Assault Skill Lines. They required at least rank five in the parent skill line to use. So we saw that there were several from, uh, I think I think there was three from the Mage's Guild. I don't, maybe there was three from the Fighter's Guild. Um, it's a little bit weird because two of the abilities like you don't really use. <laughs> so I'm curious if they're like always active fast, like, uh, you know, visual effects or what, because you're not really, you're not really casting Camo Hunter or Inner Light, unless you're in PvP. So, I mean, you know, but that's just, it's just kind of weird because that's like a minority of, of the of the content in ESO. Um, yeah, Trample from the Assault skill line. Um, sounds interesting. I don't know if that's a gap closer or what. Uh, to acquire Grimoires, visit Chronicler Fear and Deer in the east wing of the Scalarium. After completing the quest, Wings of the, uh, I'm sorry, Wing of the Indric, and purchase with gold after meeting the above requirements. I was surprised by this. Um, purchase with gold. Uh, so I don't know if they're looking for a gold sink or, or something, but... Um, yeah, that was kind of interesting that it's going to be purchasable with gold. And then again, there's like three parts to this, <laughs> uh, for the scripts. Every grim grimoire has three, uh, script slots, slots, one each for a focus script, signature script, and then a fixed script. Scripts are how you customize your grimoires and turn them into scribe skills and are unlocked as on a per character basis. So again, my understanding, <laughs> and uh, and somebody yell at me if, if, if you're like clicking like log back in, uh, if it comes back up, but my understanding is that basically the grimoires are what the skill looks like and what it kind of does. So the backflip for the bow, uh, I think that that is the base thing. And then you add in stuff that determines what it does. Because my understanding, well, they talked about it. I don't know how what it's going live as, but, but they talked about like you could heal for example, on some of these skills. So maybe you could do a heal and then do a backflip out of danger. Uh, so that's what they were saying. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, traveling knife sounds more like an ability we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with the blue skin guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, torch bear summon bears with torches. What? <laughs> uh, I had been saying since they came back to ESO, necros need permanent minions and have it... And, um, 
and have it at least one to two minutes. 20 seconds is way, way too short. Necro is too much of a buff class, spending half your time to buff. And then Koalas agrees with a uh, zombie there. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of people that uh, are, you know, with the the Necro class where it's at are, are not really happy. Uh, I did a poll earlier today. I don't know if you guys saw here on on YouTube. I had to split it up into two because I could only give five choices total. Uh, but I asked what everybody's favorite class was. And uh, it was really interesting. The The highest out of everybody, I want to say, was, you know, I should I should pull it up. But uh, I believe it was Sork. No, no, Templar. Templar was, I think, highest. Uh, Sork was up there. Uh, Arcanist was up there, but, but like third or fourth. Um, and uh, yeah, Crow was up there. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, if you haven't filled it out, go go let me know. Maybe we'll get some more data. Um, it's just in the community tab here on, on YouTube. But uh, I thought that was really interesting. And yeah, a lot of people that main Crows, people, you know, drop comments that were saying like, oh yeah, uh, this class and this class are what I'm playing right now. But I kind of main a Necro, but I'm playing it less and less because it's not where I want it to be. So definitely. Uh, will spell, spellcrafting be beneficial to healers? Will the benefits of customization actually be worth considering in a build with a meta this complex already? I have a feeling it will and be lots of fun. Yeah, uh, you know, I think I really want to see what these buffs are like. I, th I think that there's um, there's a lot of stuff. I don't think anybody wanted to hear it, so I didn't talk about it before, before everything was going live. But there's actually a lot we can figure out just by kind of knowing the rough basics. Um, you know, it's a question of there's a lot of classes that don't have certain abilities and um, and certain buffs. And for them to be able to add that to their repertoire would be huge. Healers, you know, you don't really need more heals. Um, so it's really about buffs, I think, for healers in, in trial settings. In Overland and stuff like that, I think it does offer you the opportunity to potentially add a fun skill to your bar that maybe has some utility. I don't know if we're going to have spammables. I don't know if we can use some of these S spammables. I kind of get the impression that we can that we won't. Um, but that also matters quite a bit. Um, if you can, you know, use it off of, you know, use it, cons you know, consistently, and that can be your damage type. If you can make AOE spammables and choose your damage type, um, it's a little bit unclear how much, you know, customization we're actually going to get. They talked about it like we're going to get a lot. If that's the case, it's going to be crazy, um, <laughs> and, uh, and and we'll be able to do all kinds of interesting builds. You could make full bleed builds. You could make full uh, Ice Warden builds, you know, swap in stamina skills to help your sustain. Uh, maybe, you know, so if you think about it, like certain classes like Nightblade, right? So we have our Siphoning Strikes that provides us with a bit of recovery. Um, that's really nice and makes your recovery better in a lot of situations, but certain classes don't really have that. And so if you could add something like that to a class, it could change the play style a lot for solo and overland and that kind of stuff. <laughs> you think it'd be fun just to backflip and heal people? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting ability. I don't know. We might see some really fun and interesting stuff. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll keep going here while we're hanging out and waiting. Um, <laughs> scripts. Reverend Gamora has three script slots, uh, one each with a focus, signature scripts. Uh, yeah, I think we started on this. Um, so focus scripts set the main function of the scribe skill and also determine its name and resource type and cost. Um, this is interesting. I don't know how many of these we're going to get, but I would like to have. <laughs> uh, I would like to be able to choose the damage, uh, the resource type rather, and the, uh, and, and the, you know, and the damage type to be able to make a, you know, stamina costing skill of any type and a magic costing skill of any type. I hope that it's that flexible. Uh, focus groups also determine if, the, uh, if the ability is enemy targeting or self targeting, or if it follows buffs will only appear to you or also to your allies. Okay. So, so in theory, we could be buffing our allies here. So that's good. I missed that when I read through this earlier. Make it combine the bone armor and the ghost spirit together. That would that would that would help buffing. Huh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> uh, signature scripts give the skill uh, unique effects. These unique effects often lean into the mechanics and pass and the passives from the parent skill line. For example, a passive master signature script when used on Volt will give you the Hawkeye passive with the bow from the bow skill line. Okay, that's uh, that's a lot. That's interesting. Okay, so the lean into the mechanics and passes for the parent skill line. So you can, so if you got some passes from the skill line, you'll be able to trigger it. I'm trying to think of all the different situations that that could be useful, could be helpful. Huh. 
Okay, affix scripts give the skill a final benefit of known buff and debuffs, largely from the major and minor system. Okay, yeah. So I mean, if we can, I don't know. Uh, one of, one of the questions is like, you know, giving the buff to our allies right now. The reason that you want a Nightblade, a DK, a Sorcerer, um, Nightblade, DK, Sorcerer, and Templar uh, <laughs> in a group is because uh, the DK and the Nightblade give unique versions for stamina of extra of minor the minor buffs of weapon and spell damage. I'm sorry, sorry, weapon damage and sp and weapon critical uh, for for the DK and the Nightblade, and then the opposite, you know, the magic of costing version uh, or the ma magic of benefiting version rather for the Templar and the Sorcerer. So. If you could give those buffs on anybody, that could change group compositions a lot. Um, for in-game, that might not be good, but for everybody else, that could be good. Uh, it could be a case where you could bring whatever class you wanted because, you know, for a healer, uh, you know, as long as we're getting the buff from somebody, it doesn't really matter. Now, if that buff, you know... <laughs> If that buff can be put on a DPS or something like that, you're just going to, you're going to have, you know, it'll be like 11 or, or 10 Arcanist or something, right? You know, whatever's parsing the most, everybody will just come on that and, and it'll be even more, uh, you know, one-sided. It could also open up EC, uh, Elemental Catalyst, for those who need, you know, all three damage types. You can get it easier on some than others. Being able to have a new damage type and make sure that you can keep all those up easily, uh, that could be really useful. You could run Elemental Catalyst on anybody. It wouldn't just have to be like, hey, I'm, I'm playing on a crow. Now I'm in EC jail. <laughs> maybe, we'll, yeah, uh, maybe they will. Seems like a, a door opening to more expansive way of looking at builds. Yeah. I feel like they have been waiting for, for this for a while and expand the system a lot in the years to come. Uh, you know, I don't know about the latter part, uh, but could be. Um, I think I think that they tend to put things in the game and then kind of abandon them, and they said they weren't going to do that. But I, I so far, I think Tales of Tribute <laughs> is the only thing that I've, I've seen them not abandon. And I think the only reason they didn't abandon that was because they really like it. So I, I don't know. Maybe, though, it, it would be cool. I would like to, I would like to believe uh, for, for whatever it's worth, uh, but I am skeptical. We'll just exit back out here. Just, I don't know, just in case, just in case, see if it, see if it helps. Also, if anybody sees anybody else getting on and it's, it's just me, would you let me know? And maybe I'll do like a full restart or something. I assume it's just the servers, but just, just to be sure. Come on, work. <laughs> you think they will? Yeah, you have hope in the in the Zoss team. Um, I did. I I used to too. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I, I guess. I guess we'll see. <laughs> uh, I used to have. I used to have hope in them too. I. I less so now. Um, unfortunately, I feel like everybody got to, got to go see that. Uh, so not every combination of scripts can be scribed in every grimoire. That's interesting. Scripts that share the same name may do slightly different things depending on the grimoire they are applied to, but the same thing will apply. Mix and match and discover works for you. You can acquire scripts by having them drop in the world after completed their associated wing quest. Gain focus scripts after completing the wing of the griffin. Gain signature scripts after completing the wing of the dragon. Gain a fixed scripts after completing the wing of the netch. After completing these quests, these will unlock account-wide benefits, such as the ability to earn scripts via specific daily coffers and purchase them from, the, from scribing and infinite archive vendors. Oh, okay. Additionally, after completing the wings of the dragon, you'll be able to find scripts hidden in certain mage skills across Tamriel. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, I don't. I wonder if that's going to be like, uh, like finding lore books in the Mages Guild. Maybe we'll see. You're getting the same area you are trying to log in for what that's worth. Thanks, Leary. I appreciate that. Well, <laughs> uh, we'll we'll finish up and go through this, and then if if the servers aren't back up, then then uh, maybe we'll call it. We're supposed to be running a trial in about two and a half hours, three hours almost, actually. Uh, so hopefully they'll be back up by then. 
Luminous Ink. Luminous Ink is Scribing's crafting resource. The ink uh, cost to scribe a skill is based on the number of scripts added and changed, or changed, rather. Uh, when scribing a skill for the first time, it will always require three scripts, and therefore cost three Luminous Ink. Okay, so you, you can get one skill from each of those, you know, respective skill lines, I suppose. Uh, so... Once you make it, if you just want to modify a part of it, it sounds like you don't have to. It, the cost is lessened. That's cool. However, if you're how, however, if you're changing out only a single script on a previous scribed skill, the luminous ink cost to scribe will only be one. Okay, cool. Okay, so it's always one. That's interesting. That's a nice feature for sure. Uh, after completing the quest, Wing of the Nets, you can also gain ink via Harvest Notes. Okay, that's cool. I. Uh, I think I know. A, I think I know someone <laughs> uh, who I can talk into harvesting some some flowers for me to maybe getting some uh, getting me some ink. <laughs> uh, my wife likes to run around and harvest. Also, I, I, maybe I need to update the uh, the uh, harvesting build um, or at least change the thumbnail on it. I think I could do better now so that people can see it. And it, it's really nice when you're. I mean, hopefully everybody knows that's in the stream or whatever. Um, but if you don't, uh, you can make a build uh, where you can go and harvest and you can basically ignore all the monsters and they ignore you. Uh, and you don't have to be on a Nightblade. It helps. It's a little bit easier, but it's, it's only a small bit easier. Um, and then you can go pick it and then like take off. And like you, if you start to aggro, usually you're out of there before you can like fully aggro. So it's kind of nice. Uh, skill styling, we kind of walked through that. I think it's pretty straightforward. I thought that was cool that we have it. Uh, the new trial, Lucent Citadel. On the outskirts of Fargrave City District, there's an old vault known as a Lucent Citadel. Most well-traveled scholars have never heard of this vault or believe it exists, except Kishargo, uh, being the former leader of the Scribes of Moor. It is not like other... It's not like other scholars. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I can't read. Uh, his research has led him to the Citadel looking for a powerful object known as the Arcane Knot but he is not the only one. With his expedition in tatters after being ambushed by a Daedric force, he now needs help retrieving the knot and ensuring it does not fall into evil hands. All right, cool. So it's in a uh, portal location in northern Westworld. Um, the trial includes a normal version and veteran version. That's basic. Ne unique item sets from there. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what those are. Um, <laughs> unique achievements. Um I'm going to do a poll on this. Actually, can I do a live? I bet I could do a live poll. I would like to know uh, what everybody thinks because um, it, feedback has been given to Finn, who's who's the uh, the dungeon uh, lead of the dungeon team. And uh, let me see how I can pull one up. Uh, and what I want to know, <laughs> the question I have is what you guys think, would you rather skins or body markings? That's what I want to know. Which, which would you rather have? Hold on, we'll, th we'll throw up the poll. One moment. Because I think I know the answer to this, and I would like to know what you guys think. And feedback has been given to Finn, but maybe what I think is wrong, and you guys have a different uh, have a different take. So let me know what you think here. If it, you know, for completing a vet trial, right? So like if you did uh, back in the day, Kinds Aegis, Sunspire, uh, you know, both the Clockworks, you get the the silver and the gold skin. Would you prefer that, or do you like the wave markings that you get? Or, or whatever markings you get from Rockgrove, I'm not even sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, would you prefer the body markings or would you prefer skins? Uh, that's what I want to know. Oh, come on. A couple of people have to vote. <laughs> uh, why flirt with this idea for, for years, then deliver it and never touch it again? Like they already could have escaped the situation years ago. So my guess is they have a, a lot lined up for this system. They just don't know how to do it all had to do it all those years ago um shadow i like i i want I, I want to believe that i want that to be right we'll see what they do with the endless archive the thing is that they've said a lot of things and they've they, and then 
it, that hasn't been the case. And they've kind of, they've kind of lied to us. So for me, like trust is broken, right? Like, and, and this is a bit different, but they told us for years and years that it wasn't the servers causing issues, right? That the servers weren't, weren't the reason that they had any, that there was lag and other things like that. And then they updated the servers last year. And then they, at the end of the year, the studio director was like, you know, I think it was the studio director was like, you know, yeah, we've upgraded the servers to help performance. Um, and they kind of bragged about it. Like, sir, like performance is better because we upgraded the servers. And it's like, we told you, you know, everybody's been saying the servers were old when ESO started. Right. And, and so people were saying like, they need to be updated. And, uh, and they were saying, no, 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 it's not the servers. It's not the servers. And so that's just one of many situations that I think the issue would be that they would want to not screw things up. Like they just put a bunch of work into this. And if they change anything, then they have to change a bunch of things, you know? So I think that they probably try to take one big swing at it and we'll probably leave it there, but it would be cool. I'm with you. I would, I, I want to be wrong. <laughs> uh, think this chapter is worth the price. Uh, Chainsaw, what do you, uh, what do you like? What do you, what do you do the most of? It would be the question for you. Uh, what's that? I'm a billionaire now. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I missed something. <laughs> uh, so skins, 71% said they would like skins and 29% said they would like body markings. I'm going to leave it up for a bit longer. If anybody else wants to, wants to chime in there, we only got seven votes. I'll put this up. I'll, I'll get a lot more, you know, uh, we'll put this up after the stream and I want to see if more people agree, but I think most people want skins and they keep putting in body markings and, and Finn has been told that we want body markings and that people, or I'm sorry, that Finn has been told that we want skins, uh, not body markings. And then they keep giving us body markings. And, uh, they said it's basically the same effort to do either one. Uh, but we've asked for skins and they keep giving us body markings and it's just, you know, it, again, just one of those things where it's like people want one thing and they just decide to give us the other. And I, I don't know why, uh, you did a lot of trials in your break. Uh, Chainsaw, uh, I'm going to be running the new trial um, if, if that's the main thing you're interested in, and I will do a review on it. Um, I thought the Dread Cell Reef was one of the best trials they've done, probably the best trial they've done to date. Rock Road was amazing. Um, I thought Sanity's Edge was incredibly disappointing. Um, one of the biggest disappointments with the, was that they just reused <laughs> all the assets for where you were at. So it was just like, oh, okay, now I'm in uh, Eleanor, and you know, now I'm. In. <laughs> so they just reused all these all these assets, and I was pretty disappointed with that. The mechanics were ripped from dungeons. Uh, I was really disappointed with that. So I will do a review and let you know what I think about that. Um, you know, and, and then just wait a little bit here and see how spellcrafting turns out. And if that is going to be interesting to you, again, I'll do some videos on it. So just, I guess, stay tuned. But I don't think I can tell you right now, right? I don't think we know enough. And I'm not really sure anybody could, to be honest. Oh, PTS tunes got transferred to live with 1 billion gold, 1 million Telfar, and every set in the game. Um, yeah, that's that. I mean, they should. Uh, I, every set in the game would be great. They actually didn't do that last uh, patch. And, uh, and it's kind of annoying if you're trying to test stuff on PTS, you really need to know all the sets. It's really the best way to do it. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we've had a few more people vote and now we're almost up to 80%. Uh, so 78% uh, would prefer skin. So yeah, the, I, I, I'm disappointed in this, not to make too big of a deal of it, but uh, it's a little bit disappointing. Been playing nonstop since June, uh, 2014. Whoa, that's crazy. What's your favorite thing to do now, Shadow? Uh, so Unique Mount, I assume this is probably for the hard mode. Several titles, housing items. Housing items from these can be quite quite cool, um, depending on what it is. Uh, of course, hard modes, uh, that's, that's all kind of normal stuff. So we can take a look at some of these new sets. I'm curious if how much you keep up with the developers too, Shadow, to be honest with you. Um, so Overland, because uh, I'm curious, I mean, you have a lot of faith. Um, I'm curious if, yeah, what where that where that comes from. Uh, so uh, add 200% status effect chance while where while your health is above 50%, and 10% healing done while your health is below 50% or less, or 50% or less. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think 
of when you would use this, and I, I, I just don't think it's going to get used. The only place would be the archive. Um, but I don't think you need it there. Uh, so I think probably Torx Pact and Heartland Conqueror is going to stay the best for that. Um, oh, this is a, this is a really interesting set here. And I, I should have looked up how to say this. Do you pronounce the E on this? Is it macabre or do you say macabre? Um, <laughs> uh, this is a really interesting set for a bleed build. Um, so whenever you, and, and, and solo, whenever you kill a monster, they burst with blood magic, dealing 50% of their max health to enemies within six meters as bleed damage up to 24,000. This damage cannot critically strike. This effect can occur once every 0.5 seconds. Uh, there is some places where this could be a fun set to use. Uh, if you're using Blood Drinker, uh, which is going to be on our Bleed Warden build that'll be out either later this week or maybe Monday, then uh, that should, in theory, buff this damage by 20%, which would be cool. Uh, but I also think just the fact that if, if you're killing you know, a lot of ads, um, grinding certain situations, it could be a, it could be a fun and useful, useful set to have, uh, honestly. So we'll, we'll just have to see, but uh, I, I don't I don't hate it, that's for sure. Uh, Alid Refuge, it's a heavy set. Block in attack reduces your damage taken by three by, by 11% rather for three seconds. Uh, this is a great set and I like what they're doing. Um, I, I, I hope they heard me. <laughs> I was talking about this when we talked about some of the other sets and one of the things that you really need for tanks, you know, th there's this issue with tanks where, you know, if you, we always have buff sets, right? And, and the, one of the issues is, is that you, if you go with a survival set for a tank, there's not a lot of good options. So, you know, something like, yeah, you can, you can run a set that'll heal you for a bunch, right? But if you have a healer, you don't need that extra healing. You're only really dying to one shots if you have a healer who's doing, who's doing a good job. So then it's like, well, I need a set that reduces my damage taken, um, this, and there are certain situations in really hard hitting fights where, where maybe, you know, you really just need to, again, reduce your damage taken. You're not trying to heal yourself for more. It's not going to help you. And this can help with that. Um, I don't think this fully gets there because one of the issues is that like block doesn't work, right? So you're getting a heavy attack and you don't, you think block is working and it's not. So you get one shot. Uh, so there's other situations like that where, you know, it already reduces the damage taken, but, um, it's not horrible, and I do think it's a, a huge step in the right direction towards making useful tank survival sets. A lot of the other sets, if you guys have a question about one, just like th throw it out there, and I can tell you why it's probably not that good. Um, but most of them, or really all of them, are not amazing for, for tanks, uh, for pure survivability, at least from that standpoint. Yeah, we've got more vo votes, and it's, uh, it's going up. We're, we're above 80% for skin. So yeah, most people would rather have a skin. Okay. <laughs> Symmetry might be good on the Chrome, sir. Honestly, housing and overland content is what, what uh, Shadow is saying they do now. Best experience I've had in the game. The housing community is so welcoming and running into random people in overland and just questing together is fun. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, people that love housing, love, love uh, sharing and telling everybody about their house. And absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> uh all right, uh, crafted set, Highland Sentinel. We've got three lines of crit. That alone makes this kind of interesting. Um, while in combat, each second you stand still, grant you a stack of Sentinel's Eye every one second, up to 10 stacks. Each stack increases your critical strike chance by 468. Each second you move removes half of your stacks of Sentinel's Eye, rounded up. Exiting combat removes all stacks of Sentinel's Eye, Using charge and teleport abilities do not remove stacks of Sentinel's Eye. So this is crazy. <laughs> this is absolutely nuts. Um, 468 critical, and you can gain up to 10 stacks. So that is like over 20%, if, if my mental math is correct there. Um, not much over, but a little over 20%. 20% critical. That's, that's insane. Just for like standing there. Like, um, so if you're in Sunspire on the dragons, uh, this would be crazy. Any parse fight where you're just standing and doing damage, you could just stand there with also with like three lines of crit. This could be crazy. This could do, uh, like I, I can see this getting nerfed down, but this is, this is nuts right now. Now it's not good in most situations, but for pure trial parse fights where you're just standing there, pressing buttons, not moving. Um, 
that's nuts. I will say just as like a, a style thing, th this stand still and get buff uh, that they keep doing with a lot of different sets. I really don't like it. It feels, um, you know, the Nightblade, one of the things is their Dark Cloak. If you're on a tank, if you don't move, <laughs> it heals you for more. It's a boring style of play. It's like stand there. That's that's what I want you to do to be most optimal is not move. And and that to me is kind of the opposite of what you want from a play style. You want your play style to be fun and engaging and and making sure not to move is not particularly fun or engaging. Um, but it could be a crazy set for parse fights and it's crafted so anybody can make it. So it could be fun, could be could be nuts. <laughs> you could see some really funny, like meme, uh, meme like <laughs> uh builds and stuff come out of that just by the fact that, that is that is so crazy. Uh <laughs> oh, oh man. I can uh, I'm imagining it now. <laughs> uh Alid plus Warrior Poet plus Esoteric Greaves might be too much protection. Um yeah, uh, so Aelid is the new one that we just talked about, right? That's what you're talking about with that? Yeah, yeah, Aelid reference. Okay, I was like, I don't remember an Aelid set, so it must be that one. Okay, Warrior Poet. <laughs> uh, Warrior Poet, for those who don't know, gives you a bunch of extra max health uh, and esoteric grease. Warrior Poet, I believe, gives you major toughness, minor toughness. It gives you, it gives you more health, right? Uh, the buff, the major minor buff that a warden gives you uh, is I think what Warrior Poet does. The issue with that is like you don't need it because in theory, you'll most of the time you'll have a warden if you want really high health. Um, and, and a lot of times like high health in, in some situations will kill you. But yeah, <laughs> uh, the esoteric griefs. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that could be a the, yeah. I, the thing is that Again, it's like those one shots that are killing you. I guess if you stack stack ninety k health and you're in a particular fight that doesn't scale off your health, you'd be fine. Uh, uh, Shadow, Shadow, you've done everything in the game except trials. Oh, DSR was your first time, and and now you, and you did it for the first time last Friday. That's the first time you've done any try. And it was on, I assume, normal DSR. That's crazy, Shadow. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Well, you should come join us for some trials and get some tr try a few vets. That'd be that'd be awesome. Just need to find a group. Yeah, are you PCNA? Uh, we do a little bit harder stuff kind of now. It and that was in the boss. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you should come by and join us. So we don't have a lot of training trials, but Nani runs a lot. Uh, Nani stress relief. She's over on Twitch. Um, and she does a lot of like normal trials, uh, or I'm sorry, not normal trials. She does a lot of like beginner trials for, for people that are, that are beginning, not normal. Uh, cause normal you can kind of run through, which I'm sure you had that experience. Uh, when you go up to vet, it's a totally different, it's like going from normal to vet dungeons kind of on the extreme, extreme side. So yeah, you should come try. Uh, and anybody else who's watching, come, come, come join us if you want. Um, we're, we're all, we always need more raid leads. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, it's a perpetual problem. We don't always have enough runs, but we always love having more people. Uh, Threads of War. What do we got here? Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped one. Uh, Theriker Strike. So we, similarly, we have three, three lines of weapon and spell damage. Kind of interesting. Dealing damage with a fully charged heavy attack. Grants you major berserk for four seconds. Increasing your damage done by 10%. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. Um... <laughs> Uh, th this is, this is, set's never going to be used. There's no point in, uh, having this set or it being in the game, unfortunately. Um, dealing damage with a fully charged heavy attack, uh, giving you 10% more damage for, you know, uh, for four seconds is, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, <laughs> this effect can occur once every one second. I, I don't, that doesn't need there because your heavy attack takes 1.8 seconds. Uh, the buff doesn't last for long enough. Uh, if you're running a heavy attack right now, the best thing for all heavy attack builds is going to be uh, Deadly Strike, which is the purchasable PvP set, and then uh, uh, Sergeant's Mail. Is the, that's the two sets you want on heavy attacks right now, and it will do more damage than this, so no real reason for it. Um, the thing is you can get Sergeant's Mail... <laughs> from from like Wayrest sewers so it's incredibly easy to get so anybody can get that so like this being a crafted set doesn't really do anything um and then deadly you can purchase uh so i guess if you didn't have gold i guess you could purchase this but like honestly it doesn't really matter that much at that point so um yeah you know whatever uh threads of war um 
We got a, a mix here, stamina, magicka, weapon, and spell damage. Your light and fully charged heavy attack, gain 100% status effect chance. The status effect is based on the damage type of your weapon. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think where this could be useful. Uh, I think probably not. Probably wouldn't be useful anywhere. Archive is the first thing I go to. Again, it's status effect chance. Um, and it's just for your fully, your, your, oh no, for your light and heavy attacks. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. With the new changes, the status effects, being able to apply uh, more damage with your light and heavy attacks could be okay. Uh, I don't think it's probably going to be meta, but it's, it's interesting. It's, um, it's probably not nothing at least. Uh, what's the name of the guild? Oh, we're, uh, that wasn't the boss is the name of the guild. Um, what, and you can find it here on YouTube. If you go to, if you just like click on my icon and go to my homepage, uh, it should have a link. I think it's nighthard.com too. You can go to nighthard.com and there's like a link tree there and you can join the discord there. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can always join through there or it's the normal discord link, uh, slash TWTB. Uh, that wasn't the boss, just TWTB abbreviated. So, yeah. Uh, cool. More ascribes, uh, more ascribes thesis. Uh, so, okay. So now we're in the trial sets. We gain the minor slayer. Uh, for those who don't know, you always want to generally pair one trial set with one non trial set. And the reason for that is because of minor slayer. This three piece bonus giving you 5% extra damage is, is pretty huge. So uh, <laughs> just to give you a way of thinking about this, and, and you guys stop me if I'm going too in depth here, but if you consider that like this could be a line of crit, right? Like we saw up here where it's all 657 critical chance. So critical chance every 219, I believe, um, it gives you a 1% uh, bonus to critical chance, right? So this gives you 3% extra critical. So, uh, and then if you're maxed out on critical damage, your damage will do 125% extra damage. So what that means is that if we take 3% times 1.25, that's how much percentage damage increase we're actually getting from this. So, uh, in that case, we'd be looking at 3.75, if my math is correct, a 3.75% increase in damage, and this gives 5%. So 3.5, uh, 3.75, assuming we're maxed out on critical versus 5%. So it's always going to be better. And, and I'm sorry, critical chance gives you the most damage out of anything else besides minor slayer. So minor slayer always gives you a couple of extra or a percent and a quarter extra damage when compared to other uh, sets. And then usually uh, their five piece bonus is fairly comparable, uh, almost as good as a non-trial set. So, or in sometimes better, sometimes worse, obviously, depending on what you're comparing it to. Uh, but having the Minor Slayer almost always gives you a little bit more damage. <laughs> uh, so that's why you have it there. Uh, oh, nice, the Perfected giving cr increased critical chance. That's always nice because again, it's the best you know five piece. Uh, it's the best one line besides Minor Slayer you can get from the below you know five piece sets from the uh, two, three, and four piece uh, bonuses. Uh, oh, looks like there's a, a question threads and heartland maybe oh uh yeah i was thinking kind of the same thing uh this threads of war with heartland conquer but i i don't it's just with your weapon attacks and so i think i think it's one of those things that it looks good but i think in practice it's probably going to be really bad is what i think it is koala it, there's a lot of a lot of stuff where you're like oh that sounds good that, that sounds like it could be cool and then it's like oh wait it's only your light and heavy attacks Okay, so if you assume that you're proccing a uh, status effect every second now, the thing is with a plus 100%, it's still not going to be guaranteed every second, every light attack. So then you got to think, well, you know, could you compare that to a skill that, that tends to apply status effects with a, a very high chance? Well, how much extra damage do you get from those? And the answer is uh, less than 10K for sure, right? So, uh, and then there are sets that will give you, you know, uh, they can give you like the meta sets will give you about that or a little bit more. Um, so that's how I'd make the comparison. I would compare this to a skill that applies the status effect quite often uh, versus the weapon. And then, you know, the doubling it, I don't think it's worth the five piece bonus is what it's going to turn into. But I, I think, I think you uh, are on the right page though, Koala. I think it, it's interesting and, and it could be like, I think it's worth checking out at least. So if you check it out, let me know, let me know uh, what you find out. Um, yeah, sorry. So we'll get the five piece set here on the more ascribed 
scribe's thesis, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Increase your critical chance by 128 for every major buff active on you, up to 1536 critical chance, increasing your critical damage done by 1% for every minor buff active on you, up to 12% critical damage done. I do wanna say, uh, just, just as an aside, um, this critical chance, uh, they should get a, do away with this. <laughs> uh, they should calculate this. If they want to use critical chance on the back end, that's totally fine. They should just give people the percentage critical increase um, so that we, because you have to look up that it's 219 or you have to test it in game to in back solve for the fact that it's 219. I think it's a bit much. So um, uh, this, this would be a very easy thing for them to do. It would be a bit labor intensive, but I think it would be a great thing and I wish they would do it so that it would make the game more accessible to more people, but, uh, which is kind of what we're all about here, right? Making trials and other things more accessible to people so that, uh, yeah, so that everybody can play and, uh, we have more friends in Endgame. Um, I looked at this set and I was like, oh man, this could be crazy. Uh, so you could up to, up to 1536. So what is that? Call it, yeah, I think 7% critical. So this this could increase up to 7% critical and up to 12% crit, uh, critical damage done. Um, as, as we talked about earlier, we're assuming 125% critical damage. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we're ca assuming we're capped out on that. Uh, so what would that give us? That would give us like 9.25% 9, 9 extra critical or extra uh, damage done, so 9.25. Um, that makes this comparable uh, to some, uh, lower tier tri trial sets, um, with the extra critical damage done, uh, if you need this critical damage, which you probably shouldn't, uh, you know, it's a question of like, could you move something around so that this was still benefiting you? Um, it still ends up below most other trial sets, uh, most other like good, you know, meta trial sets. So uh, unfortunately I think it sounds really fun. Uh, the other thing is, is getting, Getting all those uh, major buffs is also uh, uh, tricky. I, I calculated earlier, and I was like, you know, I think you can get seven or eight pretty solidly. Uh, to get to like 10, 11, like that's pretty hard. <laughs> uh, so I don't think this is actually going to be useful unless they uh, unless they change it up a little bit or change these numbers or something, in which case I think it could end up um, – then I think it could end up in, in like a category where like maybe we do want to use this. So it just kind of depends if they change anything, if they add major buffs, minor buffs, um, because uh, there's just not quite enough. So uh, next trial set, it's a medium set. Dealing critical damage gives you a stack of, of sliver for 10 seconds. You can only gain one stack of sliver every 0.5 seconds. When you gain your third stack, the stacks are consumed and the crystals launch the enemy. You enemy you damaged dealing 3000 physical damage this scales off your weapon and spell damage this is basically it sounds like the skill from thoat replicana uh uh the first the his first iteration or her first iteration um so i think that's cool uh i think we'll just have to see how it does um i don't have a real good intuition for this uh if it's going to be amazing or not um could be. Yeah, I'm, I'm not actually sure. I don't know if anybody has uh, an intuition for this in chat. Maybe you can let me know what you're thinking. Because, uh, yeah, I, I don't really have a strong intuition for this. It really depends how this scales, I think. And it seems like it can critical, so that's kind of nice. Uh, but, yeah, we'll just have to see. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards no, but most, like, 99% of the sets in the game aren't particularly useful. So, uh, you know, <laughs> chances of this one are kind of low. Uh, so that's probably a safe bet. Uh, so then Zoran's Masterpiece, a light set. Increase your max magic and max stamina by 1667 for you and up to 11 group members within 28 meters of you. This bonus persists through death. Okay, uh, so if we're trying to get like a weapon and spell damage equivalent, basically we just divide by 10. I believe it's actually 10.5 if I'm remembering correctly. So that means this gives us like 166 um, max magic and stamina. That is nice, but I don't think it's enough. Um, so when we look at like PA, we look at pearlescent, um, we're looking at the, you know, uh, at least 100 higher than this. So uh, probably not something that'll be used. Uh, it is nice. There's another buff set. Um, 
I'm struggling to think of when you might want to use this and I can't, or when, when, if it could be good. And I don't think so. I think there are, I don't, I don't think the buff is good enough. If this buff goes higher, uh, then it could be, and it could turn meta, but I don't think so. Wait, did I see servers? Oh, too much. Okay. I was like, are the servers back up? <laughs> we'll check. Okay. Still no, still no. We'll quit out and go into it again just to see. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, you try it with back alley gourmand, but you still never heavy tag. As sad as if you use sergeants. <laughs> you thought about it, we were pinging the NA servers really bad. Yeah. Uh, I've got some friends that are uh, that are from Australia, and New Zealand, and and yeah, they have pretty bad, <laughs> pretty bad ping. Usually around 180, 210. EU server seems worse, and I haven't tried it in a while. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of rough. It would be nice if there was an. I mean. I like having you guys on NA, honestly. Uh, <laughs> um, and there's probably not the population for it, but uh, but yeah, I, I wish for you guys' sake that they would have a Oceana uh, server. But going over to EU, um, you notice that it, it does seem a lot quieter than than uh, NA too. So like further like separating that, I, I, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think there's the interest in the game right now for it. While you have more than 50% health, increase your critical damage and healing of your group members by 11%. Group members wearing Lucent Echoes cannot benefit from this effect. While you have less than 50% or less health, reduce your damage taken from monsters by 20%. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, that's... Um, while you have more than 50%, increase your critical damage and healing of your group members. Huh, that, that's really interesting. Um, this could be a really good, this, this could be another really good, actually beneficial tanking set. Huh, for survivability. So while, while you're at more than 50% health, you're buffing the group. Cool. Uh, critical damage, especially in a non-optimized group where you're probably going to be at if you're a tank that's learning. Uh, so this is probably going to provide some benefit for the group because the last thing you're worried about in a beginning group <laughs> or a group that is is less good or less experienced is Warhorn uptimes because the raid lead is calling a thousand. I've, I've raid led. If there's one thing I've done and, and that I specialize in ESO, it's leading trials and leading trials for new people in particular. Um, and I can tell you that you know you're you're calling out so many things. You're helping people out. You're saying you're you're saying, hey, so and so, do this because you can see that they're confused. And they don't know what they're what's going on. So you're not calling war horns, and you can tell people to like just war horn off of cooldown, but they usually don't. So that would actually provide a benefit. The extra healing for the group members could also be useful because if you have new healers, they have lower APM, so they're not they're not casting abilities nearly as fast as a more experienced healer. Uh, so that's pretty huge. And then, you know, and then when you get under 50% health, reducing your damage taken by 20% is pretty massive. I actually really like this set. Um, I really like this set for new tanks. I, I can, if this stays the way it is, I'd have to think about it some, but I would, I would almost start recommending this for like most new tanks. Um, because it buffs the group when it needs to and when you're in less experienced groups and it can save your life with the reduced damage taken. So, uh. I think I like this set a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This and the other set where you're blocking another increase by, what was it like 10 or 11% uh, damage reduction? Yeah, 11% uh, damage reduction. That that's that would be, you know, 30%. That's pretty huge. Uh, I like both those sets, and I think they're both moving in the right direction. So. All right, new mythic items. Um, we've added three new mythic items in this update available to discover antiqu antiquities. Uh, so we've got heavy hands, uh, Rorkin steam guards, activating block while in combat grants you steam guardian for 0.5 seconds, reducing your damage taken by 99%. The 
This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. Blocking attack while Steam Guardian is active reduces its cooldown by five seconds. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so, so this set's kind of, this is, this is a bit hilarious. Um, so the problem is that block is, is broken and it's been broken for about a year and a half and they've known about it and it's been reported to them a bunch and they, they ignore it. Um, they've been ignoring it for a while. And, and one of the issues is if you hit buttons a lot, if you hit block a lot and you're pressing a lot of buttons, it will tend to happen more often. And so if block registers, this could, this would be an amazing set. But the problem is if you're hitting block a lot, block often doesn't register. So this is basically like if you're hitting this right before, <laughs> right before you're about to take a huge amount of damage, you can, it'll block, it'll turn it into like, you can avoid a one shot basically. And then if you do it successfully, it reduces the cooldown to every five seconds, which basically means you can always block heavy attacks. So, you, so I will say this, I a hundred percent would like to set up a run where I tank on a DPS with this set. I am down for it. I think someone like uh, Hyper uh, will definitely use this, or uh, you know, someone who is extremely sweaty in the end game. There's a lot of actually, you know, great tanks out there. Um, I think that people could use this to tank on a DPS uh, and a very, very high risk, uh, decent reward <laughs> uh, kind of build. Uh, so I do love it for that, but like this being used by most tanks uh, is not going to happen. I think this is more of a fun meme thing, and I absolutely love it for being a fun meme thing. It's it's a little bit frustrating that the proc condition will probably lead to more people experiencing the block bug. Um, so that kind of ruins it for me, just because the bug in the game that they haven't fixed for a year and a half does kind of ruin it for me. But in concept and in theory, I love this. And I think it would be incredibly fun being able to tank on a DPS, uh, having to have the, you know, half a second, uh, you know, time to, to be able to pull up the block. You could also, in theory, no, I was about to say, you could use this in the Endless Archive for the ads that cause so much problems. But the problem with the ads is their light attacks hit so hard. So that, that actually wouldn't work, unfortunately. But, uh, um, <laughs> uh, Elmwood, I don't think this. Uh, I don't think this is going to work for you, man. I don't think you have the ping for this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it, yeah, right. Exactly, it's just incredibly, uh, incredi incredibly fun mythic. Uh, Shadow Queen's cow. Uh, while crouched, you can see witnesses and guards through walls. Successfully pickpocketing a witness or guard applies distracted them for ten seconds, stunning your target. Decreasing your detection radius in stealth by 30 meters against distracted targets. What? We're getting a stealth mythic? What? That's crazy. While crouched. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Koala is uh, saying Shadow Queen with Zynode's ninja build. Oh, my God, please. So I guess this. Um, what is what is the ninja build? Uh, can you tell me about this? I don't know this one. Uh yeah, interesting. Okay, so you can see witnesses and guards through walls uh, while crouched. That's kind of fun. Just a wall hack. Successfully pickpocketing a witness or guard. Apply a witness. I don't. I don't know what what it means by witness. Just anybody, perhaps. Um, for ten seconds, stunning your target, decreasing your detection radius in stealth by thirty three meters. Yeah. Uh, I mean. So. Hmm. I don't know how you use this to best effect or how this actually helps um, because you have to successfully pickpocket a witness or guard and then it applies distracted to them for 10 seconds, stunning your target. The issue though is like your your pick, it doesn't really make sense because you're pickpocketing one person, but you're worried about the witness or the guard seeing you. And so this stuns the person you pickpocketed, if I'm reading this correctly, if I'm understanding this correctly, which is not when you do it successfully and you really need the buff whenever you do it unsuccessfully. So this doesn't actually make any sense to me, if I'm being totally honest. You would almost need to like pickpocket this person and then 
in 10 seconds go and like pickpocket the person that they're looking at. So there's a place in Alanor in front of, uh, is it Alanor? No, no, no. It's uh, the other city, the other major city uh, where you start the the quest line for, for, uh, for that zone for Somerset. Um, anyways, there's, there's a place where there's people looking at each other and you can pick one, you can't pick the other. So you would pick this one, run over and then pick this other person. So you go back and forth with this. Uh, it's interesting. It's fun. Um, I, I would love this. I really want them and I'm hoping, <laughs> I assume there's just not a lot of interest in doing this, but the, the quote unquote justice system, it could be expanded upon and could be improved. Like they haven't touched it in a while. It's been a while since a zone has had new unique items that drop like that, like it does in Vardenfell. Um, so I would love to see, you know, something done with this, like improve that whole system. Um, and then this would be a lot more fun, but I do love it. I, I love the ideas. These are, but these are really, these are some of the, the most fun and interesting mythics that we've seen in a long time. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, the regular server is down too. I actually haven't, I don't know, haven't tried to be on the regular server. Yeah, uh, Dar the, the trick with the stealing, just so you know, Darlock Bray is definitely the set. Like that's the absolute go-to set for um, for Nightblades uh, or for any kind of stealing build. Um, you you want to actually pair it with like another set. You can use like a three-piece set to or something else to further reduce your stealth radius um, because you can get to the point where you can literally be jumping on top of a guard. And unless you're unless you move in front of them, they can't see you. So you can actually stack a couple of different sets. Uh, Sithis is touch. I'm trying to remember what, what that, what that does. Um, but it's not one I use, so I am not sure what it does. So let's see. Yeah. Why are you killing enemy game 5% movement speed for 30 seconds and come, yeah. So, um, this is a, uh, this is a trick. <laughs> uh, this is not the best set. You don't actually want, I uh, gotta, gotta love Outcast website with all the, all the ads. Um, you don't actually want, uh, this isn't helpful because when you kill an enemy, then you, you become vis invisible. Uh, it, this still procs that you're detected. I could have sworn that this still procs that you're detected. Does it not? Okay. Zoss Kevin made a, a post. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can already be at movement speed cap though without without this. Like you don't actually need this. From go check go do do me a favor. Do an apples to apples comparison. Go check out my Nightblade build and see if you don't like it more. Um, because I don't because I don't think you need that. I don't think it's the way to go. Um, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of stealing <laughs> in ESO, uh, and I've iterated on a build a few times. Go check it out. See see, see what you think. Um, I'm sure it's very good. I, this, you know, but I think it's like one of those sets that, yeah, we'll move on. Uh, what else we got here? The Saint and the Seducer, Neck. While in combat, you gain one of five random major buffs, which changes every 10 seconds. Enemies within 12 meters of you gain one of five random minor buffs, depending on which buff you have. The available buffs and debuffs include Major Berserk, Minor Maim, Major Resolve, Minor Breach, Major Force, Minor Brittle, Major Evasion, Minor Vulnerability, Major Courage, Minor Cowardice. Um, while in combat, huh? This, <laughs> I think we already have something like this that doesn't work with the endless archive buffs that increases your major and minor buff duration. If this, for some reason, you know, worked with that set, I think you could have like a hundred percent uptime on all five of these. And I think that would be really interesting. I think we just need to test it out and see if it, uh, if it, if it works. They're doing some investigating on the servers. Okay. So, uh, all right. So they let us know that they are aware there's a problem and they're working on it basically is what it sounds like. All right. Well, thanks for letting us know shadow. Um, yeah, this could be interesting for the endless archive for that reason. Um, you know, these buffs are all over the place. <laughs> uh, so like some of them are damage buffs, some of them are survivability buffs. Uh, so I don't really think that this is super useful because you can't control these. This could only be useful if it works in the archive, in which case it could be awesome. Um, yeah, it could be really cool. In that case, yeah, I'm trying to think. I guess 
it's a little bit weird with the debuffs, but I mean, having all these buffs would be great. Yeah, he just said it in a weird way. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, oh, you can you can get a skin by doing getting some achievement? Completing the adventure across a decade achievement? I mean, that's cool. I wish they would have thrown that in the new trial. <laughs> uh, so we got a bunch of other stuff that we can get, collectibles and what have you. Um, and then homes and all that kind of stuff. That's a little bit outside my purview. I know Shadow might be more interested in, in some of this housing stuff. Uh, well, in theory, I have a run in a couple of hours. And uh, and I need to go make dinner. So I think we'll probably wind it up here. Um, if the servers don't come back on, we have another we have another run planned for Thursday. Uh, so we'll swing back then. And, uh, and, and if the servers are back up tomorrow, I will uh, get in. I, I typically like to make more... Uh, polish videos that are shorter because uh, I want to respect you guys' time. Um, you know, if you're just trying to get some information. So I'll try to make a condensed video on some of the changes or, or what, what's going on with right now with the, uh, the scribing and kind of some of the takeaways of, of that. So uh, yeah, look for that out this week. And uh, yeah, I think we'll call it here for today. I appreciate everybody dropping in. It was nice to get to meet everybody. Uh, Shadow, uh, really nice. Elmwood, I think there's a lot of a lot of people that I haven't really chatted with before. So thanks everybody for for tuning in. But uh, yeah, we'll call it here, guys. Appreciate everybody for watching, and. Uh